Hi, my name is Sergei Dimchenko. Welcome to Introduction to Constraint Logic Programming Workshop. If you want to learn more about me or learn how to contact me, please go to this website. It has all kind of information about me. Okay, what's constraint logic programming? Constraint logic programming is an augmentation of logic programming paradigm. And in this paradigm, you have variables and you have relations between variables. And you specify these relations via constraints. For example, we can have two integer variables, x and y. And we have these constraints. x is less than or equal 10 to 10, x is greater than y, and y equals 9. If we have these constraints and integrality constraint, we can deduct that x is equal to 10. What's uh, the pros of constraint logic programming? Constraint logic programming is declarative. You only specify your constraints, maybe some hints how to solve it, but you don't specify exact algorithm. It's done behind the scenes by the system. Programs are usually compact, um, at least more compact than um, imperative implementation of the solution for the same task. And it's understandable if you know the, the syntax of the language, you can open almost any model and understand what the relations between variables, what the constraints, and what's the problem. And it's easy to modify. For example, if you have some set of constraints in a business setting or anywhere, and you implemented that set of constraints in your program, and suddenly a new business decision or new business constraint, and you just can add some constraints to your program, and it will work. And often it's fast enough. Um, com algorithmic asymptotic complexity is usually exponential for constraint logic programming. But in practice, there are a lot of pruning, and you do not look at every possible node in the search tree, so it's fast enough for many applications. But of course, of course there are cons. Uh, one of the, of the major problems is running time of the program depends on the in instance extremely depends on the instance. For example, for one instance, you can have running time of minutes, and for a slightly different instance, you can have days, because it's exponential and it's unpredictable. Also, running time extremely depends on heuristics you use for find the solution. And uh, different heuristics can work for different problem instances. So it's a matter of experimentation. And it's impossible to predict like in a theoretical way. Also, optimization is slow. Uh, constraint logic programming is mostly about finding a feasible solution. You have a set of constraints, and you want one solution that satisfies this, cons this set of constraints. And if you want to solve an optimization problem, for example, you want to satisfy these constraints, but also you want to maximize or minimize some value. It's not natural. You have to introduce a new variable, and you add constraints to that variable. I, I'll return to optimization later. And also, Constraint logic programming based on non-mainstream logic programming paradigm. And logic programming is not too popular even compared to functional programming. There is, this talk is only one talk on this conference about logic programming, I believe. In this workshop, we'll use Eclipse. Eclipse is 
prolog implementation with some extensions and a lot of libraries for constraint logic programming. So this is an uh, official website for Eclipse constraint programming system. It has a lot of useful information, documentation, links, examples, anything. Okay, Eclipse has a lot of libraries. There are many libraries, and in this workshop we will use two libraries, IC and GFD. IC is an interval arithmetic constraint library. You can have uh, integers and bounded reals in this library. And GFD is interface to G-code. G-code is, is uh, the most, the fastest, the fastest constraint programming library right now. And this interface, GFD, only supports integer variables. <coughs> and it has a lot of other constraint logic programming variables, constraints of graph sets, a lot of them. Also, uh, there are interfaces to linear programming solvers like um, open source solvers and commercial solvers. In constraint logic programming, you can use any type of constraints, not only linear constraints. But if your constraints are linear, it's much faster to use special specialized solver, linear programming solver. And let's look at some available libraries. Is it large enough? I can, I can make it something. Okay, it has built-in libraries. It's mostly prolog. <coughs> it has algorithms. Uh, algorithms are usually not related to constraints. It has regular expressions, max flow, compatibility to, to be compatible to other Prolog systems like SWI Prolog, and has a lot of constraint, constraint programming libraries. That data structures, graph algorithms, development tools. There are tools for code coverage, to visualization, to debug, to profile, interfaces to other systems. It has HTTP client and HTTP server, for example. And Eclipse is a prolog implementation. It can be used just as a Prolog implementation. Uh, how many of you are familiar with Prolog? Raise your hands. Okay, okay. Let's do some Prolog demo. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, just a common line interface to Eclipse. Is this large enough? Okay. Is it too big? <laughs> Okay, so just uh, run Eclipse from your favorite command line, interface, external, anything. Okay, let's start with Prolog. Prolog has this interpreter, and you run queries in this interpreter. So we can write like x equals one, and every query must be ended with a dot, with a full stop. And we have our answer, x equals one. That's great. 
what if we write x equals 1 and x equals 2? No, it's not possible for x to be at the same time 1 and a 2. So comma just means and, it's conjunction. Let's try x equals 2 plus 2. x equals 2 plus 2. Not probably what you expected. It's literally equals 2 plus 2. If you want it to be equal to 4, we use is. Is tells prolog to actually execute, to evaluate arithmetic expression. What's interesting about prolog, it works like both ways. Any, usually, any argument of a predicate can be input or output argument. For example, we have an append predicate in prolog. Append appends two lists. List is, um, you have in the square bracket, comma separated, list of values. For example, x is now a list. And we can use append to append two lists. But what's interesting, we can use append to deconstruct a list. For example, We want to know what should we add, what should we append to 1, 2, 3 to get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And it's 4, 5, 6. It's the same code, the same predicate. We can use uh, first parameter as an input parameter or as an output parameter. Also, we can use it to verify facts, for example, what should we add to 1, 2, 3 to get 1, 2, 4, 5, 6? No. <laughs> Nothing. It's, it's not possible. And uh, that's a prologue uh, from, like, interpreter, from the querying side of things. Of course, we can have a source file a source code in a file and consult that in our interpreter. For example, we can let's create new file test.echo. And here we can define our predicates. For example, let's define a predicate append to 1, 2, 3. If you have one parameter, one kind of input parameter, and one output parameter. But both, both of them can be either input or output. Now we want to consult this file into our interpreter. To consult a file, to load it, you type file name in the square brackets.
Okay, it's now compiled, loaded, and compiled. And we can use it. Append one, two, three. Four. Why? And it works. There is a different way to load files in Eclipse. It's Eclipse specific, and it can be used to to run prolog programs as a scripts. As scripts. For example, in our test file, we can define a predicate. Let's call it main. The name doesn't really matter, but it's like in C. It's let let's call it main. And it will output <coughs> hello world. And now we can run it from the command line using Eclipse minus B test. Minus B means load this file. And minus E main. It means execute the main predicate. And it's hello world. Okay, let's return to our presentation. Now I want to, uh, to introduce some Eclipse-specific syntax. I want to introduce a TPK algorithm. It's a very simple algorithm to introduce some syntax. We will prompt for 11 numbers, compute some function for every number and output in a different order and using if then else construct. You can open it on your computer. It's uh, in the GitHub repository. tpk.echo. Um, now I just want you to open it in your editor. If you want to load it, we, we will run it later. So here is the file. First, we have our function, which is really a predicate, but it's kind of can be used as a function. In Eclipse, you can use uh, arithmetic predicates as functions, and uh, the last parameter becomes an output. So here's our main. We read list of uh, 11 numbers. It should be comma separated in square brackets in prolog format list. We get the length of the list using length predicate. After running this length, n is equal to the length of the, of the input. Then we reverse. And there is some for each syntax specific to Eclipse. So for each element in the RS list, and simultaneously for each i from n minus 1 to 0 with step minus 1, do this. Uh, please uh, pay attention. Please note that variables should start with a capital letter in Prolog and in Eclipse, or, with, or with an underscore, underscore or a capital letter. So we have this loop. In this loop, we get a value for each AI of this F function. And this is an F then else, F then else construct. If B greater than 400, then print too large. Otherwise, output index and the value. So how to run it? In the same way as we run Hello World. Eclipse minus B, <coughs> TPK. 
Now it waits for the input. Let's give it some input. And we have the output. So the purpose of this demo is to show your loop constructs and if then else construct. Okay, as uh, as you've seen, arithmetic and prolog is done with is predicate, but the problem is that it's not relational. It can work only one way, unlike append predicate. Let's define an ABC predicate that will, C will be A divided by B. C is A divided by B. Now we can load this into our interpreter. And run it. As you can see, 10 divided by 5 is 2. And that's all good. But in Prolog, we also want to run it in a different way. For example, what should we divide by 5 to get 2? And it's instantiation fault. It's not possible in Prolog to run arithmetic in a relation way. And constraint logic programming can be seen as, as a relational arithmetic. To repair this example, we load IC library for our constraint programming needs, and we change is to dollar equal. And now we reload, reload the file. And let's try to run ABC again. 10 divided by 5 is still 2. You can see it's like a bounded real. It, it doesn't matter for this situation. It's like a number from 2 to 2. It's 2. And we can run it now in a different way. A equals 10. 10 divided by 5 is 2. And we can run it this way. Any way we can run it. Any direction. So that's like an advantage of constraint logic programming versus versus old logic programming. And I have an exercise for you. There is a file factorial.echo in the repository. And I want you to complete the program. So it will compute factorials both ways. So you can give it n and get factorial, or you can give it factorial and get n. So 
So please try to complete this program. I'll give you about 10 minutes. And please raise your hand if you have any questions or problems. I'll come to you. What's the sign you use on, on, on assigning? Sorry? Instead of equal, you have to use um, OK, dollar equal is f for non-integer. If you want to, to constrain integrality, use pound sign equal. You can use also dollar equal here. It will work. OK, if you have no idea what to do, you can Google factorial in Prolog, not in constraint logic programming, but just in Prolog. It's like cheating, but you can have to do some just a little mental step to. But first, try to do it on your own. In prologue, uh, predicates by itself don't return anything. You can have all your output through parameters. You just call your predicate. You don't, unlike in functional programming, you don't write something equals predicate from something. It's not a function. It doesn't return anything. It only changes its, its parameters. We have a new variable that constraints to be n minus 1. We need to introduce new variables in prolog. You can, we cannot just write n minus 1 here, because it will be just a term. It will be like just a term. It will be literally n minus 1, like this expression. And we run a factorial with with this n minus 1, the result will be f1 factorial of a number n minus 1. And in the end, our real factorial equals, not equals, constrained, constrained to be n times f1. Um, yes, but it's a little bit complicated. Um, I think I consider it's more advanced thing. You can even visualize every step. But now I loaded my factorial solution. I can run it. Factorial of 5 is what? It's 120. And you can see Eclipse tells us it's only the first solution, and maybe there are more solutions. We can press semicolon to see if there are any more solutions, and there are no. There is only one solution. And we can run it in a different direction. <coughs> and we can ask if a factorial of, of 5 is 120. Yes. You may ask, why do we have this n is less equal than f <coughs> in our program. I put it here to, to make it not loop forever if we ask for the second solution. Otherwise, if we run it for the first solution without this n less than f, without this line, it will search forever for the second solution. It's not like a huge problem. We know it's just one solution, but to make it clean, I'll put it here. So 
So I think let's make a break right now. So let's continue. And we'll continue to send plus more equals money. It's like a famous puzzle. Here's this equation. Send plus more equals money. And every letter is a digit. And different letters represent different digits. And we want to find uh, such assignments of letters, of digits to letters, so this equation will be true. How can we solve something like this in Eclipse? This is the whole program. We have money predicate. Uh, it has one parameter, a list of digits, a list of letters. And next constraint, this is a domain constraint. Two columns means that every member of uh, DS list must be from 0 to 9, integers from 0 to 9. Next constraint, constraint is all different. It just means that all, all letters should represent different numbers. Next we have S not equal to 0 and M not equal to 0. This is because S is the first letter of the number and also M is the first letter of the number and we don't write zeros um, in the first position when we write numbers. Next we have our main constraints. Let me align it. So just a representation of our equation in the syntax of Eclipse. This is the least significant digit. The next digit will be multiplied by 10 and so on. So we have this equation. I hope it's clear how to convert equation into this multiplication constraint. And after that we call labeling. Labeling is a predicate that instantiate variables. It assigns concrete values to variables. In our prologue, in our factorial example, we didn't have labeling. But that just because we were lucky. Constraint propagation enough was, uh, constraint propagation uh, was able to instantiate variables by itself. But it's not, in, but it's not the case in January. We must call labeling. Let's try to run this program. Clips, load it. And run it.
So we have our answer. S is equal to 9, and so on. And Eclipse says that's only the first solution, maybe more. Let's press semicolon. No, it's only the, the only one solution, the only solution. Yeah, all different. All different. It's uh, is defined in IC library. In the IC library, we load it at the first line. And let's try to remove labeling. Let's comment it out. So right now, only constraint propagation will work. Reload the program. And what can we see? We can, we, we can see that S is still instantiated to 9. Constraint propagation was able to figure it out. But all other variables, some of them, at least except M and O, uh, only have their domains reduced. So E can be from 4 to 7, but it doesn't know what, what number exactly. That's why we need search. Labeling is search. Let's return on our, our labeling. And also, I have commented out a different library, GFD. Now I'll switch from IC library to GFD. The rest of the program is exactly the same. There are no differences. And let's try it. And we get the same answer. So there are different libraries in Eclipse, and models for different libraries are very similar or even exactly the same. So you can try, if you have a problem, you can model it and try different libraries. Maybe some libraries will run faster. So that's what I told about constraint propagation and search. When you specify constraints, constraint propagation fires. It tries to reduce domains of the variables so constraints will be satisfied. But it's not always the case that it will reduce to concrete, value, concrete values. So we need search. Search, it's like we have one variable with domain 1, 2, and second variable with domain 4, 5, for example. And we cannot reduce these two, va two values domains further with constraint propagation. So search just tries, let's, tries one value from domain of one variable. Instantiated it, like let's try it. And after that constraint propagation fires again. And after that search maybe fires again. It's like one layer after another. Let me illustrate it. So we can have like x less than equal to 10, x greater than y, y is equal to 9. Sorry, I've loaded two libraries at the same time. Let me. So 
So with these constraints, only constraint propagation, constraint propagation by itself, we are able to figure out concrete values. But let's say we have x from 0 to 1, y 0 to 1, and x is not equal to y. So constraint propagation only can tell us basically what we told it. x is from 1 to 0, y is from 1 to 0. It's not really helpful. So we need search. If we run labeling, we get, we get our concrete values. It's one solution. The second solution is x is equal to 1. So we need search. And labeling is like the simplest, simplest form of search. It just takes the first variable. Like here, it takes x and assigns it the first, the minimum va value from the domain. So it takes x and sign, assigns it 0. And after that, constraint propagation fires. And uh, if we need more search, it takes next variable, assigns, um, assigns to it next uh, value. So we can have different heuristics. It's not uh, always a good idea to assign minimal value to the first variable and so on. There are a lot of heuristics built in into Eclipse. So there is a search predicate. Search predicate is like labeling, but with parameters. You can add different parameters. You can specify heuristics. So you should specify two heuristics in your search. One heuristic, what variable to choose next. And the second heuristic, what value you choose for that variable. And uh, labeling just do input order for the first heuristic and in domain for the second. In domain, it's like minimum value from the domain. But there are a lot of other heuristics. Like the most important one is first fail for variable choosing. It's like choose the variable that has the least domain, domain of the least size. It's very useful in practice. So I want to show you a demo of our different, with, with different heuristics. So here we have uh, variables. Each variable is from 0 to 9. And we specify that all of them must be different. And we have search with some heuristics. And right now, it's default like for labeling, input order and in domain. I've loaded it, and let's try it. I pass it two variables, A and B. And what we have? We have A equals to 0, 
b equals to 1. So first it takes a and assign it 0, next b and assign it's 1 because 0 is already taken and all variables must be different. And now let's try a different heuristics. For example, instead of in domain, let's try in domain max. Now it, it again takes the first variable, but assigns, assigns the largest value in the domain to it, 9 and 8. So let's move on to N Queen's puzzle. I'm sure many of you are familiar with this puzzle. We have a chessboard and chess queens, and we want to place our queens in such a manner that they don't attack each other. So there should be no two queens on any row, column, or diagonal. So we can formulate it in different ways uh, to solve this constraint logic programming. One way is to have like n square variables, one variable for every square, and one variable can be one or zero. Zero if there are no queen in this particular square, one otherwise. But it's not a very good formulation because we have a lot of variables and it will work too slow for large values. A better formulation is to have x and y coordinate for every queen. Then we have two times n variables. But also we can, we can notice that every row is different, every column is different, so we can have only n variables like for every, for every column and just value of the variable will tell which row. I mean, we have n variables. First variable is on which row the queen is placed in the first column, and so on. In this way, we have only n variables. One, each one from zero, each one from one to n, and it's like probably the most efficient formulation of this problem. How can we do it in Eclipse? This is the whole, pro the whole program. It's really compact. So again, we load IC library for constraint programming. We load list utils library for, for getting a particular value from a list to get value from a list using index. And there are two parameters. N is the number of queens and size of the board at the same time. And we have our output parameter list of queens, our answer. This line uses length to construct list Length can be used to get length of a list into a variable or construct a list using size. Every number in queens is from 1 to n. They are all different. Again, all different constraints. 
and this is somewhat complicated constraints to diagonals. So we go for every y, for every queen, for every g from y plus 1. It's like getting every queen and every queen right after here, like every pairing of queens, every two, two queens. Then we have, we get uh, value from the list by index. And we say that absolute value of indices is not equal to absolute value of values. It means that, if you think about it, it just means that it's not on one diagonal. Because, for example, if two queens on one diagonal, one, is one on A1 and another one on B2, different difference in indices will be one, and difference, difference in values will be one also. And this will be true for every, every case. Then we run search, again with not too efficient heuristics. Complete here means we want to run a complete search. We want to explore all possibilities if we can't find the answer. All the other, other possible values are like have a timeout, have a specific depth. So let's run this. Again, I've loaded it. And let's run it for four queens. We have our solution. Queens in the first column should be placed on the second row, and so on. And they will not attack each other. And also you can see it was really fast, 0, 0.00 seconds. What if we run it for eight queens? We have our solution, 0 0.01 seconds. What if you run it for 15 queens? for 17 queens. Now it's taking more than a second. If you want to get only running time without the answer itself, we can place an underscore instead of Q, instead of any other variable, and we will get only running time. We will need this later. Okay, so I have an exercise for you. Using, using this N Queens program, try to make it faster. I think it's possible to go to several hundred Queens in like less than a second, maybe a couple of seconds. Right now, it's more than a second for 17. So what can you do? You can try different variable order heuristics. It's here. Instead of input order, you can try something else. And again, all possible values for heuristics are here. You can find a link to this manual page on this slide. 
On this slide, constraint propagation in search, there is a link to all possible parameters for the search. So try different heuristics for variable ordering and for value ordering. Also, there is a deficiency in my program. It uses lists. These are literally linked lists and linked lists. And if you want to get a particular value, particular index, index from the list, you have to traverse all the lists. It's like slow. So you can try to choose it to erase. Eclipse also has arrays in addition to lists. You can, you can see the syntax for the array in the TPK program, or you can consult Eclipse manual. Also try a different library, GFD instead of IC, as I did for one of my previous examples. Or maybe something else. And try to make it fast for 100. Ah, okay, sorry, I, d I didn't tell you. So param predicates tells what, are, what variables are global, what variables should be taken from the outer scope. So without parameters, all variables are, e are local for the iteration. Okay, right now I'm going to run find all. Find all is a prolog predicate to run a different predicate for some values, uh, get all solutions and put it into the list. <coughs> so I want to know, it will run and put all solutions for eight queens into the list access. And I want to know the length of that list. Ninety-two. So for eight queens, it's ninety-two. But for example, for seventeen queens, ah, it will run forever. Sorry. For 12 queens, okay, for 10 queens, yeah, 724, Is it truncating output? yeah, it's truncated, uh, truncating output. I'm not sure it's possible from the interpreter. Pro probably it's possible. Interpreter is like uh, for debugging. If you want to run it in, in production, you output all values to the standard output or send it to a program. You have to use like right line or some, some output in predicate. There should be some parameter, I don't know. Can we manipulate the output of find all? Say you reverse that list? Uh, yes, of course. Could we reverse XS, XS, and then see what the end Yes, yes, we can um, run reverse. If you put underscore before the name of the variable, it will not output it. So, Mm 
Let's do our boost. So any improvements? I got a little when I switched to GFD. Yeah, that's probably the easiest one, yeah. Try first fail instead of input order. And observe the dramatic improvement. Sorry? Speed improvement is about two thirds when I did that. Uh -huh. But that's good enough. I've been able to get it so far. I've just made two simple changes. I changed IC to GFD and changed input order to first fail. And now I can run 20 for less than four seconds. If you think about it, it's probably better to place queens in the middle, to try to place it in the middle first. Because it's very easy to place them on the edges and you will spend a lot of time placing, placing things on the edges and in the end you will find that there are no space to place in the middle. So we can, for example, change in the main in the main middle. Uh, doesn't help. <laughs> yeah, in the, we, we can try in the main random. It will help in most situations, but sometimes it will run forever. <laughs> it's random. Ah, sorry. In the main middle should work. I just forget to reload my file. Oops. GFD doesn't have in the main middle. Different libraries can have different possible parameters. A 
Okay, right now for 20 queens, it's just a fraction of a second. Not four seconds, as it was. Running time is exponential, so adding just 10 queens multiplies running time many times more. So we can run 35 for less than 2 seconds. Anyone managed to convert list to arrays? For arrays, we want to use dim instead of length. It's like one dimensional array with n variables. There is an improvement. Okay, I think we've spent enough time with this. Everybody was able to try different parameters and observe a difference in running time. There are a lot of improvements we can make to this. It's like we can write a predicate that will like put our variables inside out so it will start not from the first one, but like from the middle one. There are a lot of different <coughs> things we can do, but it's not really useful in practice because n-queen is not really NP-complete. You can have, a, there is a constructive solution in linear time. But I think it's useful to try different heuristics and understand running time is different. Okay, let's go to optimization. For now, we only looked at uh, any, any feasible solution. We want any solution for n queens problem. Like, but we also can, uh, there is a possibility we want to optimize some, some quantity. We want to maximize the variable. Or minimize a variable. 
There is a library called Branch and Bound for Eclipse. And we will use minimize predicate from it. And minimize predicate takes go and the cost. If you want to maximize something, you just negate your cost. And there is a quick demo. It's the same or different, but now we want to, for example, minimize sum of all variables. Let's run it with two variables again. And we get 0, 1 as in previous example. But if we change in domain mean to in domain max, in the previous example, we got 9, 8. And now we still get. 1 and 0. Not 0, 1, but 1, 0. And if you look at the output, Eclipse gave us some logs. First, it found a solution with cost 17 and so on. And in the end, it writes it found no solution with cost 0. So it's like a, pro a pro proof of optimality. But it's, it's slow because it imposes new constraints and can run new constraint optimization problem for these new constraints on cost. If you want to maximize some, just add minus. And now we have 9 and 8. So optimization, it's not like natural for constraint logic programming, but it, it can be done. OK, how can you use it in the real world? There are a lot of applications. Some of them you can see on the Eclipse website. Uh, there is my paper. It's not really an application. OK, it's used for digital application virtual engineer for microcontrollers. It's used for, for, different, for different industries, and some of these industries are like secretive about what they use, like, like aviation industry or cre credit score industry. Basically, you can use. Eclipse and constraint logic programming for any combinatorial problem. You can, solve, you can use it to solve puzzles. You can use it to create puzzles. And there are interfaces to programming, other programming languages. You can have a real application. There are interfaces to Java, C++, and third-party interface to Python. And there are development tools for testing and Debugging profiling, like for real enterprise development. And Eclipse is pretty robust. It was created by Cisco and then open sourced, and Cisco used it for internal for many years. Okay, if you want to more info, just go to the official website. It has a lot of documentation, examples, and everything. If you want to read a book, I recommend one book. I think it's the best one, Constraint Logic Programming Using Eclipse. 
by Apt and Valas. There is a also so-called e-learning course. There are videos and PDFs. And Hakan has a lot of examples in Eclipse. There are probably hundreds of them. Mostly puzzles and So there, there are a lot of resources. So any, anybody has any questions? Think. OK. Is, does Eclipse know any tricks for reducing search? For example, yes, yes. OK. Constraint logic programming is more efficient than prolog search. Why? Because for every constraint, there is a constraint propagation algorithm. So people create constraint propagation algorithms, for example, for all different constraints. It's like ongoing research. There are more effective algorithms are invented. So it depends uh, on the cleverness of these algorithms. And uh, often you can rerun your old program on new version of Eclipse and it will run faster. It's possible. So there are like, clever alg algorithms inside for every constraint type. And you can write, if you have a, some specific constraint in your problem, you can write this constraint propagation algorithm by yourself. But there are a lot of built-in Um, if you go to the search predicate help, there are examples how to add your own my choice. You can add your own heuristics for search, for choosing variable and for choosing value. It's for search. If you want to Write your own constraint propagator. It's a more complicated task, but it's in the menu. You, you can do it. I, I don't know how to do it. You can do it. You can implement your algorithm, for example, your better algorithm for all different. Anything like that? Mm -hmm. um, so you mentioned that you can Uh huh. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I've i created a couple of puzzles myself for Microsoft Puzzle Hunt. Microsoft has a Puzzle Hunt event for interns every year. And I've created a couple of puzzles. I write a blog post after the event. So I used to use to Eclipse to make sure there is only one answer. Because good puzzle should have only one answer. And also, you can use it to make sure search is not required. Because for a good puzzle to, to be solved by human, basically, all should be done in a logical way using only constraint propagation in, in their head without trying. For example, in Sudoku, you should be able solve it without like trying values, only by logic, only by constraint propagation. And you can make sure in Eclipse that basically you don't run search, you don't la run labeling, and see if it's instantiated to concrete values. Hmm? How does Eclipse compare, compare to other constraint solvers? Like why do you guys think that Eclipse over G-code or something like that? Uh, Okay, G-code is maybe faster because it's C++. It can be faster because interface has some, some overhead. But uh, it's really natural to write constraint programming 
in a logical language. L constraint logic programming is the first of all constraint programming paradigms because it's really natural extension to logic programming. And if you write it in G code directly, you have to specify types and it's much more complicated, a lot of code. If you compare to other, other prologues that have, nowadays almost every prolog system, system support constraint logic programming. But Eclipse is probably the best of all of them. For example, if you go to SWI prolog website and go to manual, and there is positioning SVI prologs. And it says that Eclipse is better for constraint handling right in the manual. So if you want to choose from prologs, probably Eclipse is your choice. If you want to choose from some other systems, it depends on many, many things. Mostly, do you know Prolog already? <laughs> yes, I used it, but I used the version before 2.0. It was slow for my, my problems. I, I plan to try a new version. Sorry? So in terms of language, uh -huh. which one is easier for you to use? Um, I, I know Prolog already, so for me Eclipse is easier to use, but uh, Minizink is declarative and it's not Turing complete. It is, it's easier, I think, for most people. I haven't used to Eclipse. I haven't used Eclipse in the real world situation. Yeah, I, on my job I don't have any prologs. Okay. I use it for solving Google Code Gem problems. It's like a pretty large problems, but not n not real world tasks. Okay, so we are running out of time. Try, try it for your problems. It's fun. Thank you. Thank you.